Welcome to another episode of Shoot Better. Today's video is going to be different than our normal ones. We're on lockdown here in South Africa due to COVID-19. We cannot go to the range. So I'm going to give you guys a video that I've been doing for my Patreon people for the past 18 months now. If you didn't know, Patreon is a platform where you can sign up to support creators such as myself that provide you guys with quality content. So if you ever thought that you benefited from a video of mine, please do check out the Patreon down below for as little as $1 about 17 Rand now, you can support the channel. And uh, I actually just knocked over this camera, which you guys will see at the end. So your support goes a hell of a long way for helping me cover expenses like that. Anyway, what the video is today, it's a stage breakdown. So what I've been doing for the Patreon guys, they've got a playlist of about 20 odd videos where I actually go back and review physical stages that I've shot in the past as we will do today. And I give running commentary on that, noticing things that we could do better, pointing out little things that you might not necessarily notice if you're actually just watching the video. And uh, I really actually, that's how my YouTube channel started. I started filming myself to better myself afterwards, to take note of small things I was doing wrong or doing right to make sure I kept doing that going forward. So I think everyone on the channel will actually enjoy a video like this. If we get to a hundred people on Patreon, for, remember, it's one dollar. I will do a video like this once a month. I'm sitting on so much footage that I can give you guys. We're currently on about 45, 48 people on Patreon. So please sign up down below. That goes a hell of a long way to helping us create content like this. After the intro, we'll jump straight into the stage review. I'll see you guys there. Some context for today's stage, I believe it was a two minute stage, four different targets from sort of one position on the tires. Now, a couple of things I did right, let's hit play. I'm gonna put myself down in the corner and you will see the stage. I'm gonna play it from where the video starts. Once again, thanks to our Patreon, Paul Jacobs, for recording this video for us. I really appreciate that, my friend. Right, let's get rid of the mouse. Just double checking my dope here, making sure everything is 100% getting rid of my sunglasses and actually popping them on top of my head. Chamber flag out, fin finger off the trigger as always. You guys will notice I'm running the Bix and Andy vertical trigger shoe. I'm keeping it lighthearted as you can see, smiles. Just give that mag a little bit of a tap, run through the stage in my head what I need to do. Right, let's get some volume going here. Last little wind check there. Right, so notice how I take my time. It's a two minute stage, I've got plenty of time. I'm not gonna rush into it, get my heart rate up. I take a gen gingerly stroll over to the shooting position and uh, I'm gonna build this position very solid before I take my first shot. Thanks to my friend Skulk, who you can see to the right of the screen here for borrowing his, uh, his Big Boss bag. It's actually this bag you see over here for this stage because my pint size game changer was a little bit too small. Uh, some other things to notice here. I'm on the target, my face is on the gun before I close that bolt. Now at this point my finger's still not on the trigger. You also notice here that I've got my bipod, this is an Atlas PSR, that I've got moved a little bit to the back. Let me just put, whoa crappy, I made a little bit of mistake there, I apologize. Okay, so this is sort of where we were. I want to try see if I can get rid of that, there we go. So I've got my bipod a little bit more back. Um, and that's just because if the rifle was too far extended with the bipod, it might have been a little bit more difficult for me to make the adjustments. Also, I knew that I was potentially going to have to fiddle with the legs and I wanted them closer that I didn't have to reach super far for them. Okay, you'll also notice I'm leaning into this rifle quite a bit and I'm running the spiked feet. Uh, that's actually APW spike feet. I'm gonna link them down below if you're interested in that. They fit sky pods and normal Atlas bipods. I'm gonna lean pretty 
hard into this rifle. I'm running the ACC chassis here. It's pretty heavy. Um, the reason I want to lean into it, when you're shooting off rubber, there is a little bit of bounce. That's what I found at least in my experience. So I'm going to lean into it a little bit more than I would normally lean into my rifle. Let's go. Okay, first round. It is a little bit windy. I think it's worth about 380 something meters. Okay, first two hits. So it's double tap. Then move position. So I generally write my dope on my hand because when I dial, it's in my um, line of sight. Now you'll see here, I'm using my whole body. And in fact, if we jump a little bit back to the previous shooting position, my whole body is touching this tire. I want as much point of contact on that tire as I possibly can. And that's gonna give me the steadiest shooting platform. I've also taken the rear bag and instead of running it flat like normally you would, I've turned it on its side to make it higher so that I can actually use that to stabilize myself right there. Uh, so let's run forward a little bit again. Um, again, now here you'll see me lay my whole body against this tire to make sure that I've got the right amount of contact. And I'm going to adjust my bipod. I could see the target there, but I wasn't steady enough and I had to squish myself into the rifle, which is something I didn't want to do. Now you'll notice I'm very smooth and methodical on that bolt close because I've got a two minute stage here to shoot eight rounds. So plenty of time to do what I need to do. I'm making sure I see exactly where those bullets hit the plates and I'm following through on that little Bix and Andy 90 trigger shoe of mine and I'm making sure I'm staying on my rifle. So because if you look at the vegetation and stuff in the background and in fact my little tripod you can see over here, my piece of lint that I've got on there, uh, we spoke about lint the other day, uh, string or whatever I've got on there. It's kind of flapping in the wind, so I want to make sure as I'm changing my shooting angle, remember the first target we shot this way, now all of a sudden I've come this way. So the wind angle is drastically changing as we're shooting throughout this stage because we've got a core, a arc of fire, pretty much a 90 degree arc of fire. So I want to make 100% sure I'm seeing what the wind's doing on that plate because just now I'm going to have to come back to this position and engage another target. And I believe these are little 20 centimeter gongs, so they're pretty small. Okay, dialing my dope for the next one before I move so that when I'm there everything's done already. And you may just make sure I don't forget anything. Again, I'm taking the, the big boss bag and standing it up on its side and leaning into that tire. Staying on the rifle, seeing what that plate's doing. Dialing again before I move. And I'm asking the ROs here to give me a little bit better calls or quicker calls on those impacts. I don't think anybody was on binoculars. I want to point out something here too that I have changed. If you notice here, I was running the MDT bag rider on the back of my rifle. That is something that I've gone away of. Uh, I think the buttstock on the ACC rides any bag pretty nicely. And I found that it does slow me down a little bit. For all this match, there was a bit of prone shooting, so I did use it. But since then, I've gotten, I've gotten rid of it. I don't think that I need the bag rider. Different strokes from different folks, though. Okay, perfect. So slow and methodical tends to kind of do the job and that's enough. If you keep focusing on your time management, you make sure your trigger pulls are very smooth, you follow through, notice what the plates are doing, you can have clean stages like this one. Now, I think pretty easy stage, but a lot of people struggled there that day and I think the big reason for that was they forgot to take in account that when you're changing that arc of fire, the wind is drastically going to change because the first rounds we were shorting, sort of shooting with the wind and then we were shooting with the wind from about a nine o'clock angle on those in between shots. So anyway, these are kind of the videos I do on the Patreon channel. There are videos that are 20 minutes long just on how to shoot a barricade where I actually go to the range. I make a video just for the people on Patreon. Now, as I mentioned, those people have got that playlist link down below. So if you think this is beneficial and you want to sign up during this lockdown period for the Patreon, I'm going to link that down below. 
We will see you guys there. Also for the top tier Patreon guys, you get my cell phone number, you can contact me and ask questions. We actually have quite a few very insightful chats with our Patreon members and uh, I appreciate every single one of you guys that have been on the Patreon since day one. Uh, we couldn't do this without you. Thanks for watching. Always remember to smash the thumbs up button down here. Make sure you are subscribed to the channel and that you've got the notification bell turned on so that when we upload, you get to see the videos first. Thank you guys. I appreciate you. Leave me a comment down below. I'd love to hear your thoughts on these style of videos. Do you want to see more of them? Again, if we hit 100 people on Patreon, $1 a month or more if you want to, please do. Then we can do more videos like this because I really enjoy making them and I really enjoy going back through my archives and seeing what's up. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye. Hello everyone. Welcome to another episode. <laughs> Woo! Oh sh So, um, yeah, I just dropped a 50,000 Rand camera onto solid concrete and uh, it survived. So, if that doesn't make you sign up to Patreon, I don't know what will. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you in the next video.